Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman, and today I am in my home garage working on a 1949 Dodge truck, and I uh, just rebuilt the carburetor, and I have um, uh, adjusted the float on it, uh, replaced uh, uh, the needle and seat, and um, some miscellaneous parts and gaskets, and um, uh, and a, um, a accelerator pump spring which was weak and it was short, and that was my my main problem. But anyway, uh, it's kind of a neat setup. On this particular truck because the uh, the air horn itself comes off fairly easy and really by taking off the air horn you know just uh, uh, four screws comes off you can um, you get uh, watch the, um, the fuel come in and so I'm gonna turn on the fuel and we're gonna watch it for the first time and we're gonna watch to see kind of how the needle and seat works on a float boat because it's kind of an easy setup on this particular uh, vehicle uh, when I'm adjusting uh, carburetors and, and, and messing around with the fuel system uh, on an old uh, vehicle like this, you know, they have mechanical pumps and so I, you know, they only work uh, when the um, when the engine's running. I really don't want the engine running. I don't really know if my carburetor's apart. So what I tend to do is I tend to, um, you see my fuel line right here. And so my fuel line goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up. And I have a, um, I have a, a, a lawnmower engine a fuel tank that I have just up as a gravity feed that I fill up full of fuel. Okay, and so here is the um, the float and the fuel comes in right here and you got your needle and seat right there and so thought it'd be interesting to, to show you what will happen when the um, when the fuel comes in. I got a, a fuel tank set up off of a lot more gravity fed and so I'm going to turn on the, the, the fuel nozzle. Yeah, oh, there it goes, and so you can see that the fuel's coming in right there, and then the float should start rising, and as it start, start, starts rising, it should shut off the fuel right there. And so the float goes up and down, and as the float comes up, it's going to push on that little bit of needle and seat, so the needle and seat is so pretty, you know, it's just this little bit of gutter right here is all it is. And so as the float comes in, it's going to push in, and the fuel comes in right there and so it's going to stop that fuel so the key is is that um, i'm rebuilding this carburetor on this 1949 dodge truck and that you could just take the air horn off so the air horn comes off fairly easy so there's my air horn with the choke cable only four screws holds it up and i had uh, um, i had to clean out my um, my main jets there wasn't any fuel coming out of the venturi um, once the vehicle started um, I was able to keep it running by um, uh, the accelerator pedal pumping up and down. So here's my accelerator pump, and that's squirting fuel in. So that squirts fuel in, but it wasn't coming out of jet, and so it wasn't staying running very long. Oh, as I did that, I saw, I saw a little bit of fuel come in because the float uh, dropped a little bit, but then it came back up again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and adjust my float now, and what I use <laughs> is I use this um, T-square is all I do. And so the T-square is... Um, uh, set to a five sixty fourth is where it is at. So I kind of put it on the put it on the uh, carburetor, and the float should be underneath that mark, and it is. If the float's sitting up too high, um, what happens is that when you put the um, you put the air horn on, it's going to push down the float, and when it pushes down the float, it's going to open up the needle and seat, and that's going to flood the carburetor and allow fuel to get <laughs> inside your engine, which is really bad. Uh, if the float's too low, then you're not going to have enough fuel in your um, in your carburetor, and so you you adjust this float by uh, taking this little bitty tang right there on the float, and you're going to bend it uh, either forward or backwards in order to raise or lower your float. So, so it's kind of a nice little setup because you can kind of see how it operates. If I push down the float just a little bit, I should be able to see some more fuel come in. Oh, there it goes right there, and so um, the key is that my float make sure my float at, at the highest level. It's not going to touch that mark. It's just barely just a little bit. I may have to readjust that just a little bit. This little spring right here, I did that just so you guys, I took that out just so you guys can kind of see the fuel coming in at the needle and seat, but that's supposed to be down all the way. It helps hold that uh, float so it's not like tilting one way or the other. And so, so that's basically how a, um, how a carburetor uh, float bowl works with the needle and seat allowing fuel to get into the float bowl itself. Um, 
wonder if I have enough fuel in here to, oh yeah, so you can see when I, when, when I open up my accelerator, this, um, this pump will move down. When that pump moves down, you can see fuel come out right at the very top over here on this side right here. And so again, so when I pump my vehicle or when I pump my accelerator pedal before I start the vehicle, that's what I'm doing is that the, the engine's not running. And so I, um, you know, you don't have any vacuum uh, to pull fuel out of the, um, through the main jet uh, from the, um, from the float bowl. And so you pump it a few times and this little bitty plunger is all that is allows fuel to squirt into the engine. So on any, um, on any, um, carbureted car, you know, we don't really teach carburetors to my students, but I do talk about uh, carburetors a little bit in my fuels class because we talk about a run-on where we don't have to really worry about that with um, with um, with a, uh, oh, a fuel injection and then also a vapor lock is also something we don't really have to worry about with um, fuel injection, which is uh, related to the quality of fuel. But with carburetors, we do have to worry about that. And a lot of students may um, want to own an old Dodge truck when they... Um, after they graduate and so uh, it's kind of nice to have a little bit of background as far as just basic operations as far as how um, carburetors work and so um, you tend to pump your pedal a couple times to get some fuel in and then when you start your vehicle when the engine is cold I always am going to want to choke it so I pull my choke and that will allow um, it'll be e it's easier to start number one is because you're creating a, a better vacuum and so fuel is able to come out of the venturi a little bit more, but also you're restricting air, which is going to make it a lot more um, rich. So I always start my uh, car uh, when the engine is cold on choke, just so um, it has an easier time of creating enough of a vacuum with the air coming in to allow uh, air to come, sorry, to air, have air come out through the, uh, sorry, fuel come out through the, um, the main uh, jet nozzles, which is right here at this venturi. Basic operation of a float bowl carburetor. If you guys have any more questions, you could follow me through Professor Pentane YouTube channel. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.